Hello. I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use New Write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Um, do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon because there is always so much to talk about. Always so much to talk about. And just once in a while, maybe, arguably, sometimes, there's too much. Such as right now, where... You've seen that this is a video about Apple Mail, and uh, look, please tell me if this is... I'm not alone in this, am I? You see Apple Mail, you think, how much can there be to talk about Apple Mail? I may never have been quite so wrong. Because as I look at... Actually, I'm so wrong about Apple Mail that, that I'm going to make a 58 Keys 3 Biscuit Guide to Apple Mail, and hopefully quite soon. 3 Biscuit Guides. They're one video which has everything that I can find that I think you need to know about a particular app or service or, or sometimes a device even. But consequently, that means they're long enough that you, you, you kind of need to bring provisions when you watch them. But for now, sure, fast, sharp. Here are five features of Apple Mail that, that may not be all that well known or which are just good. First up, an Apple Mail feature that isn't in Apple Mail. Follow. Here you are in Safari. Now, it must be Safari. This does not work in any other web browser, and all of this is on the Mac, I should say. So you're in Safari on the Mac. There's a web page, very nice. Hold down the Command key on your keyboard and tap the letter I, and I'm just saying press Command I, really, aren't I? And this happens. It does take a bit sometimes, but that's a new email opened up in Apple Mail with, yeah, let it come. Uh, very quickly, that web page that you were looking at, it's now in the email as an attachment and displayed so you could see it. Plus, you can select text and copy it out if you need. I mean, I love this. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work the way you'd hope. Um, if you're on um, YouTube.com, for instance, well, j yeah, just good luck. Uh, but I, as happens, I keep a copy of every 58 Keys video in a blog. And if I go to that, 58keys.com, and I try to do Command I, well, I just get this mess of text. That could be mail commenting on my blog writing, but I suspect it's because that page just now, I mean, it's really long, and uh, it's an awful lot of videos as well as text and things. But in general, Command I, anything. Speaking of Command I, you just saw Command I from outside mail. I don't think you're going to be shocked to know that inside mail, there are many similar keyboard shortcuts. Uh, obvious ones, perhaps. Command N makes a new blank message, for instance, and Command R start to reply. Specifically, though, Command R will begin a reply to whoever it was that sent you the message, no one else. It is reply. It is not reply to all. You know the trouble reply to all can get people into. Have you actually caused any of those problems? I, I definitely. Anyway, um, the smallest problem with reply versus reply to all is that if you choose the one you didn't want, if you make, if you choose the wrong one, you can end up piddling about having to, I mean, what else would you do? Copy everyone else's email addresses or, or drag them over to the new message. Or maybe uh, you go the other way around, select the body copy of your new message because you only notice when you've finished writing, of course. Delete it all and then start again, hopefully this time with the correct reply or reply to all. No. Press Command R or click on the reply icon at the top of the email and yes, you are replying to just the sender. Fine, but... If there were other people CC'd in the original message, you get this. You can click on this icon in the in the, like the message toolbar. It's the reply to all icon. And when you click it, you switch from replying to one person to replying to all and vice versa. And back again. And back, depending on, you know, how if you're a flurry of indecision. Speaking of people that you're sending to when your cursor is in the to, the CC or the BCC fields, uh, you can click this plus sign to see all of your contacts and then click to add any from in there. Again, this could just be me, but you have just seen the only time this decade that I've clicked that plus sign in Apple Mail. Was Apple Mail around for all of last decade? Well, I didn't click it then, whenever it was, either. I just start typing uh, typically someone's name, but sometimes someone's just email address. And I know 
that even if I'm not sure of the name of the spelling from Apple Mail, sort you out, it'll autocomplete the full name and the email addresses, and it'll get it out of my contacts list. Fine. Yes. True. And no. It, Apple Mail certainly does that. But if you are typing a name or an address that is not saved in your contacts list, it's quite likely that Apple Mail will autocomplete it anyway. It autocompletes it. You see the name, autocomplete. You unthinkingly assume that you've got that person's details saved in your contacts app. And actually, no, you haven't. Because Apple Mail also searches through previous recipients. So anyone who's ever emailed you, anyone you have ever emailed, they go in this list right here, whether or not you have them in contacts which is a good thing, it's a convenience thing overall, but that list, it can be cleared, or you can be trying to email somebody from, I don't know, a different Mac. Um, extreme example, you borrowed someone's PC and you're using Apple Mail through iCloud.com. You know you've got this person's details, but you haven't. So you can't email them because you don't know their address, you haven't got them in their contacts. It's off in this previous recipients list. In mail on your own Mac, go to the window menu and choose previous recipients. It's going to be this. It's this long list, long list. But if you go through it really one by one, yeah, look for somebody. Don't do it in one go. If you click on somebody who's not in your contacts list, then that add, add to contacts button becomes active and you can click, pop them in or remove them from the list. This is a favorite of mine. Someone has sent you, right, a long email, but there's just this one key bit in it that uh, you want to ask them about, a bit more about, or that you need to send just that bit on to someone else, or that you just, you just want to make a note of it for yourself to deal with at some point. As you read their message, select the text that you're interested in, and then, only then, hit reply or hit forward. It doesn't work with a new email, it has to be reply or forward, and you have to be reading the email that was sent to you. It can't be that you've started to forward it to someone. But if all that is true, so is this. You've now got a new reply or a new forwarded email and it contains just that section of text that you're concerned about. Plus, that's enough, but plus, because I do like this just because I like it, but it's also a favorite because it actually helps me a lot with tasks if I go just a little bit further, if I just do it a bit often. Let's say this one email actually has three separate tasks or, or jobs that you need to do. Some people will leave the email in their inbox, uh, just sitting there until they've done all the tasks. But emails sink lower and down. They go out of sight and out of mind as well. And also doing this means, well, it doesn't mean forever opening that email to see what the next task is. Is there a next task? Have I done it? Are you going in whether you finish the first task or not, it means just going back and back and forth over and over again to check the same email until you're done. Even after you finish something, you've got to check again. Am I absolutely sure? I it? No. So instead, I do this, and you, you may well be able to as well, depending on what to-do app you use. I uh, select the first job, first piece of text, the way you saw, I then click forward, and now I have, as you expect, a new message with just that task details in it. And then I send that new email to OmniFocus. OmniFocus is the to-do app that, well, I adore, really, and this is one reason. If you use OmniFocus, you automatically get a secret OmniFocus mail drop address, and anything you email to that address goes straight into your to-do list. So I've just done that with the first task, but I said there were three. I do it again now with the second, and then I do it again with the third, and now I have all three as three separate tasks in my to-do app. I can close this email and I can forget about it knowing that the jobs I've got to do are in my to-do app and that I'm not going to miss them. I also know that when I'm done and I click and there is done, I never need to go back rechecking that same email again. Yeah, no, I'm shocked as to I'm startled how often I use this. It's quite a new feature. Introduced Apple Mail only last year, and before it was there, other places had it, and knew about it, didn't yearn for it to come. But now you've got it. Undo send. You write your message. 
you hit send and then you instantaneously realize you forgot something I mean typical things you didn't attach what you meant to find you didn't include someone in the CC list that you really should have done you maybe you've just you know you corner of the eyes uh, typing mistake yeah. as long as this sidebar is open you can save the day for at the foot of the sidebar you get this undo send but you only get it for 10 seconds at least by default it's 10 seconds in those seconds you can click undo and wallop it isn't sent the world can relax and you have the message in front of you exactly as if you hadn't even tried to send it yet very nearly uh, that thing you know with switching between reply and reply to all that's gone for some reason when you claw it back this the email looks like this it's got no option it's going to go to whoever it was going to go to but otherwise you can still make any other change you need you can then hit send again and away off it will go after 10 more seconds you can go into mail by the way mail settings composing and change that 10 seconds to 20 seconds or 30 seconds or none but in each case well in each case except none what's really happening is that Apple Mail waits that amount of time before it tries sending the message. It is not the way it actually looks sometimes like it. Yeah, it reaches out and pulls back the message before a recipient gets it. It just sits there going, okay, in a bit, I know what they're like, send it in 10 seconds time. That is in every possible way great, except one. When this is set, and it is the default, Apple Mail will now always wait 10 seconds or 20 or 30, whatever, unless you set it to none, every time 10 seconds so if you are on say a macbook for instance well 10 seconds that's plenty of time to send the message and then close the lid on the macbook and if you do that and you see where this is going if you do if you close the lid before the 10 seconds are up the message will not send shutting the lid uh putting the mac to sleep shutting down the mac anything like just don't do anything like that for 10 seconds i mean you can wait 10 seconds 10 whole seconds so uh undo send selecting bits to forward like you saw previous recipients switching from reply to reply to all love that one plus uh keystrokes and email pages what more do you work well, quite a lot whether you are uh an iceberg kind of metaphor or a swan type of metaphor person these things are the smallest little surface of apple mail which is the most surprising to me anyway most surprising app for hidden features you and i have got to return to this subject and actually when we do when there is a full feature length maybe three biscuit guide i'll make sure there's a link in the description of this video to that but for now that's it for this rapid fire i think edition of 58 keys rapid fire compared to the hour and a half thanks for watching now take care of yourself write more email more people and i'll see you soon